Hi there and uh, welcome to my channel and welcome to my garage which is also my workshop. Uh, I just made this kuksa here and I'm going to show you in this um, in this video how I did that and um, uh, but before we we get to that uh, uh, let me just give you a uh, sort of an update on uh, what's going on. Um, I just turned 50 <laughs> and um, and I'm going to put more outdoors stuff on my main channel. So you will have outdoor stuff like overnighters in the woods and things like that on this channel and on my main channel. So I will mix it up a little bit. Um, and why am I doing that? Well, basically because I am seeing let's just say too much focus on the negative things in life and society and i want people to come to my main channel and this channel of course to um i i want to share a more positive outlook on life and i'm not saying that there isn't bad things going on but let's at least <laughs> part of the time focus on what's good and focus on getting back to nature, connecting with nature, spending more time outdoors and things like that. And also, or most of all, it's because my number one rule here on YouTube is that I need to do what I like to do. That's been my number one rule from the start. And uh, that's why you will see more outdoor stuff on my main channel which is basically uh, a bushcraft viking outdoors um, channel where we also talk about heavier topics but um, okay um, yeah by the way I also I didn't make the axe I didn't forge the axe but I put a, a shaft on it yesterday so <laughs> yeah um, this is our uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's not a Viking axe. It's um, the axe is actually um, uh, being in in use today in uh, where they are shaving the bark of cork trees. You know the cork oaks. I think it is. That's the kind of axe they are using. I don't know if the, about the uh, axe uh, shaft uh, or handle, but um, the axe head, that's a cork bark removing axe head. <laughs> but um, I'll put it here. I'm sure you will see it in upcoming videos. Now it's all about this kuksa, which is a beautiful thing, I believe. And uh, if you come here from the main channel, please subscribe. Uh, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. I'm not normally inside when I do videos here on uh, Bjorn Outdoors, but uh, it's raining outside and I thought, you know, it's a, this is a how to make a kuksa video or, or rather how I made this kuksa because I'm not an expert in woodworking at all, but I find it uh, fun and uh, well, what's the word? Th therapeutic? and uh, wonderful to work with wood, you know. So let's get to it. Hello there, I am making uh, a kuksa out of a piece of uh, seasoned birch. Uh, here it is. I've uh, used my saw to start shaping it. Let's see if I can put the pieces back on. Um, <laughs> I had to take off quite a bit because it had cracks in it. Um, this goes here and this one. Yeah. Okay. So basically something like this. No. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Never mind this one. But uh, yeah. Um, so this had a branch coming out there originally, so I had to use my saw because there were cracks here 
and then I had to take off even more and now I have no cracks and this will be the shape of the cook saw. I'm using, oh, not exactly like this, but you know what I mean. Um, I started to draw the shape here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I'm using the rasp um, to, to start shaping it. So this is the first time I'm using seasoned wood to make a kuksa, uh, which uh, has the advantage, of course, that it won't crack when it dries because it's already dry. And uh, but it's it's much um, it's it's harder, you know, um, tougher. So it will be harder on my knives and and everything. But uh, let's see how it goes. No, I did I did use the. The saw a little bit now, just now, to take off some piece uh, out of here. Uh, I actually prefer this piece. I prefer using the saw uh, and the reason is that I'm afraid that if I use an axe I will uh, hurt my fingers. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, it's because I'm, um, you know, I work as a novelist requires me to use my fingers to type all the time so uh, you know it's it's more like a mental thing i guess but it's more bushcrafty to use an axe i will i will say that but yeah i'm i'm using a, a saw to shape uh cook sauce when i make them because it's it feels just feels safer I'm, I'm keeping this piece here uh, for a while um, because uh, it's I can clamp it. Is that what they call it uh, on this piece? So I'm keeping it for a while <clears throat> now. Hmm. I think I'll level out the surface here. Okay, so do I make one without a handle or one with a handle? This is at an odd angle, but um, yeah, I have. I think I'll make it without a handle because I don't usually use those handles. I just hold it like a cup, like this. Um, so that's what I will do, probably. Yeah. And then I will have a, I could make, I could make a traditional cooksa handle here, but then this would be smaller. Hmm. Okay. We will start with this one. So I'm not an expert woodworker, but uh, I know a couple of things. Um, so for instance, going uh, with the grain when you're making a uh, cook saw like this is not wise because then you could actually take off the entire piece all over to the, to the other side. So you want to carve uh, or take these pieces out against the grain and I must say uh, never having worked with um, seasoned birch it is not as hard as I imagined that it would be it's quite it's okay not so bad I, uh, I love the sound. It's such a, I don't know, I, I don't know, it's, it's therapeutic almost, that sound. I 
and I've learned that you should not use too much force. You should just let the tool do the job for you. And I'll try to be careful. There's a knot here. And that's not funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> well, bit of a dad joke there. <clears throat> And as you are working with your kuxa, you will see the grain and uh, you will see how it's going to look when it's finished. <clears throat> I plan to um, see if I can carve out uh, uh, this part today and I'll uh, Probably finish the whole kuksa with sanding and, uh, and everything uh, tomorrow. So there is a crack right here and it probably goes straight through so hopefully um, hopefully it won't cause uh, too much problems too many problems um, I'll keep going but I'll um, I'll leave that part here this part uh, I won't be carving anymore here. So I find I find that when when the knife um, gets stuck, um, it's better to go move over to the other side and and remove that piece of wood from the other side instead. You know? <clears throat> I am uh, getting close to the to the bottom of the bowl now. I'm using the hook knife. So this kuksa will be quite deep actually, which is nice. Okay, uh, I'm finished for today. Um, I I used uh, <laughs> I, I cheated and I um, I sanded I sanded the outside of the kuksa um, just to see if there are any more cracks. So there is a crack here, up here, and it goes through. To the inside here. So that's a bit of a problem, but I'll try to find a solution and um, I'll leave I'll leave it thick in this part here. Um, yeah, I like it so far. It's a big, big. It's a big kuksa, big cup. So tomorrow I will um, I will finish this. Yes. <laughs> okay, so we are at day two. Uh, I have worked a little bit more on the kuksa and um, it looks good so far. Now I've hollowed out as much as I want uh, here. I think this is uh, this will be okay. It's, it's quite big. Um, there is room here to carve out... Well, there is enough material, enough wood left to, to carve out a... a <clears throat> a bigger bowl later, but I filled it with water and it did it didn't leak, but it did sweat a little bit at um, in these areas here. So uh, that could um, you know it's like a wooden boat. You you need to leave it in the water in the springtime 
uh, and then for a little while and then the, the wood expands and um, then it's watertight. So I will use it um, as it is, more or less. I will um, get rid of some of the tool marks and, um, and um, make it look a little bit prettier. But um, and then I will give it some time and see how it see if I can hollow out more. Uh, okay, so let's let's get to it. Now it's um, <clears throat> it's a little bit tricky um, <laughs> when the edge becomes uh, narrow. You have to be careful. But you want uh, the edge to be somewhat thin because uh, it's a drinking vessel. And I will, um, I will sand it as well, but not on the inside. So I usually make these with I sand them on the outside and I, I'll leave the tool marks on the inside. I think that, that looks good. And I'm going to leave it thick here because this is the end grain and that's where it's sweating. And I'm hoping that uh, when I've uh, used it a few times it won't sweat anymore because um, especially coffee <clears throat> it kind of tightens the, the grain here after a while <clears throat> then I can probably hollow out more around here and, and here as well. So if you ask me, this is the best part. That's when you that that's when the magic happens. Look at this. It's beautiful. There it is. 